You open your eyes to find yourself in a dimly lit setting, the mood heavy and oppressive. The music industrial and lonely. And in the shadows, horrifying monsters hiding in the dark. This is Doom. This is Doom 64. This isn't what people think of when they think of Doom. This is... Or perhaps this. The look of Doom is synonymous with this unapologetically 90s heavy metal aesthetics. This garish red tint and saturated colors paint the overall brand for the series. But Doom hasn't always stayed faithful to this look, and while I haven't played enough of Doom 3 yet, I have played the other black sheep in the family. Doom 64. And today, despite my mixed thoughts on the game, there are some genuinely brilliant moments brief brilliant moments, mind you, that I want to share with you. Let's dive in. Besides Doom 2016, I've never actually played any of the other Doom titles. Due to some pretty obvious parental reasons, I didn't grow up on these highly violent titles. So instead, I grew up on a Doom clone. Dark forces to be exact. As long as there's no blood, it's kid friendly. And if you watched any of my older videos, most of my childhood games haven't held up well. And I'm far more palatable to modern gaming sensibilities. But that doesn't mean there's nothing that I can't appreciate about these games. But let's just go through the surface level strengths and weaknesses of Doom 64. Like many games from the 90s, Doom 64 has some simple but satisfying gunplay. Weapons sound crunchy. And you get the rewarding, expressive kill animations. But Doom 64 also shares many weaknesses of games from this era. Confusing level layouts that undermine the pacing and gameplay. And it's another game that feels like it overstays its novelty and welcome. Because the later levels lose any visual flair and they just seem to throw more of the same at you. That said, those are just my small takeaways. What I really want to get into though, is the gripping presentation that left a strong impression on me the moment the game started. I got instantly sucked in by the whole mood. The whole sickly and otherworldly vibes from the music to the visuals just induces dread, which is something I never expected from Doom. The horror aspect only made possible thanks to the robust lighting system that they put together on the Nintendo 64. It's obviously not as advanced as the lighting system in a 3D title like Unreal Gold. But it's still pretty impressive that they were able to do so much with this aging but heavily modified engine. And in ways, the stylized nature of the game does lend itself to these strong, harsh shadows and the lighting. Though when the game doesn't take advantage of these visual tricks, the game loses quite a lot of the mood and horror aspect. More on that later. The dread-inducing presentation also trickles down to the gameplay. The gunplay and movement fundamentally remains unchanged. Your movement, aiming, 
and enemy projectiles remain totally unchanged from the previous games. Well, what's changed though is that you, the player, are far more cautious because of what might lurk in the shadows. Props to YouTuber I Am Error for first pointing this out in her video. Seriously, go give her video a watch. And lastly, I want to fawn over these corridor scenes. I absolutely love when games or anything have this eye-popping look to them. These colors and entities popping out from the background. I'm home. These corridor scenes with these strong moody lighting choices are my favorite moments in Doom 64. It's so evocative of scenes like in Aliens. Recently, I've gotten back into playing Dead Space 2 and so far, the most horrifying segment was this. The flickering, terror-inducing lights really got to me. Which is a strong testament to how good creative lighting can really elevate any scene or monster. But unfortunately, the rest of the game never rekindles these strong impressions after the opening levels. Because the game pretty much reverts back to Doom TM again. The heavy emphasis on the strong lighting and horror focus being replaced with decently lit rooms and unremarkable environments. Of course, that's not me disregarding the classic presentation. I still find the visuals charming, but they just never land as hard as the first opening levels. To be fair though, it's possible scenes like these would have worn out their welcome if they kept on using it in every level. And that does segue into one of my personal pet peeves with horror games, how they wear out their scare factor just because of how long these games are. People have criticized Alien Isolation for being repetitive and showing off the Xenomorph so often that it lost its scare factor. Dead Space 2 also suffers from the same fate from showing off the Necromorphs far too long and far too often. But it's kinda inevitable if your game has to be at least 9 hours long. Let's not even talk about horror movies. Those are about 90 minutes long on average, and they don't show off the monsters as copiously as games do. Which is why I heard some argue that shorter horror games work better for the genre. But yeah, this is beyond the scope of Doom 64, so... I don't think Doom 64 is a must-play in 2022. It has all the classic FPS strengths and weaknesses, with the latter becoming more prominent as the game reverted back to Doom TM. Regardless, I won't forget the strong takeaways from this game. These brief moments of brilliance from Doom 64. I'm Sam Blips, and happy Spooktober everyone. I'd like to thank Nati and Farmer Dude for supporting me on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate any support. Take care.